best and worst of the day. I'll go ahead and start. Common uh, sentiment that I've had over and over and over and over again, which I think is a really good thing because uh, consistently DJ Moore continues to be the best player on the field. He is just legit. It reminds me of when Khalil Mack got here where it's just like, oh, that's one of those things that the Bears <laughs> have now. That's really good because they're different. And um, he continued like he's had some throws like there was one. I think it was a slant today that was like way considerably behind. behind him. Yep. And he just that was, a, it. that was an incredible catch. That was that was awesome hands man he had another nice catch along the sideline um which my guy jason mckee pointed out probably would not have been a catch in a game because the corner would have lit him up but he still made a nice catch it was still a nice catch for practice purposes uh good adjustment to the ball so dj moore continues to dominate and i just think it's such a huge upgrade and it's going to help justin fields so much uh we'll get a little bit more into the justin fields conversation here in a little bit but you know he's still far from perfect but DJ Moore, when he throws that direction, one to two, it's DJ Moore is helping him out a lot. Your worst? Uh, my worst was, did you? <laughs> okay, so I picked the worst that I cannot really go into detail with because it's like you cannot describe specific plays. Those are the rules that we have to agree to to be able to watch practice as close as we can. But they were in a two-minute situation late, and it was basically last play of the game. Got to have a touchdown situation. And... All I'll say was it was a throw short of the end zone instead of in the end zone. And they were in the red zone at that point. And I, I, I can't really go into more details about the play, but I was just, my conclusion was like, I almost wanted to say to Luke Getz, he was about 15 feet away. I was like, hey, maybe I just, I want to delete that one out of the playbook. I didn't know what they were trying to do there. It seemed like they were maybe trying to work on a situation where if they did get short of the goal line, they would, you know, figure out a way to get there. But it, it didn't look like that was the the, uh, the answer, I w but I wasn't exactly sure what was happening. But I think, uh, yeah, I had the same reaction, Hogue. You might be right. Like, that's what it seems like. If it is oddly a shorter throw, what do you do? Like, if you can't, but how about you just throw it to the end zone? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to right. me. But I mean, they were walking off and communicating about it, so it was, they were definitely trying to do something. It just didn't really work. Actually, not. It didn't. It didn't work. Is what I'm trying to. Yeah. Uh, all right, my best from today, I thought the run game was awesome today. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're looking, like I said, I keep talking to myself during practice and watching the Bears as we get ready for the season. What are the Bears good at? What can you hang your hat on? And to be honest, I'm not exactly sure quite yet, but I think there's a very good chance that it will turn out to be the run game. Tristan Ebner broke one today. I think Khalil Herbert looked great. I'm including in the run game short passes where Herbert and Fields connected a bunch today to just to move the ball, and, and certainly in the two-minute. I thought all of that looked pretty damn good today. Uh, it was more physical, too, which I enjoyed. It was, it was just fun to watch that. Uh, my worst was, and I, may, maybe it's the best, I don't know, but um, you know, the, the, maybe the, your worst is the best. I mean, I, if you if you want to say that that Chase Claypool is trying to rise up Tyreek Stevenson and ride him all practice to try to get him to a level where he can actually handle being screamed at on game day, if that's his motivation, well, then maybe he's being a great teammate. But if that's now what's going on, he just wants to bang on the rook all day long um, and not let it go. Literally an hour after it happened. Mm -hmm. then it, then that would fall under the worst for me uh, because they had a play where one-on-one -on -one and, and Chase got physical with him, which is totally cool. Uh, Stevenson went down, and Stevenson didn't like it, didn't like it to Claypool, didn't like it elsewhere, and Claypool was like basically told him to shut up. You know, stop talking, and and it was calling him rook over and over again. Which I like. He is a rook, and and maybe Chase is trying to lift him up, but it was it was it was off putting. I'll say that. So. Let's circle back to that because I want to have a deeper conversation. Yeah. I'm not surprised at all that that is one of our worst today. And I do want to come back to that conversation about when trash talk is productive and then when it becomes counterproductive when it crosses a line. 
Nick, go ahead. Your best and worst. Yeah, my best is probably a player that a lot of Bears fans haven't heard about, but Makai Baskerville, the linebacker. Yeah, I heard, had, I heard of him today. Yes, he had himself a day, you guys. Two interceptions. One was a pick six. Never heard of him until this moment. There you go. Number, <laughs> did bear didn't notice not him on the field at all. Bear Number not a bear. Forty-seven. Watch, watch out for him in this preseason game, you guys. This is where you're going to hopefully hear a lot more of um, you know, him and what he's capable of doing. But he showed up a lot today in practice and got some big time plays. With those turnovers my worst though today was just all the false starts that we saw and you saw it from darnell wright braxton jones you saw it another time uh in the first team offense but it happened throughout the entirety uh, of this practice and maddie refluce did mention it you know in his post practice press conference that they're still working on utilizing all these cadences and how to you know just be in sync with the offense and they're working through that but there's just a little bit too much false starts for me so that's my worst for today so i'm gonna gonna reverse it and start with my worst and finish with my best because my best is a good one illegal it's the legal it's the legal formation he made it very clear who was running the show when he walked in that's you're damn right 13 Uh, minutes before it started my worst is right along with you as the sloppiness on offense the false starts and then uh, off the false starts the drops there was yeah. a lot of drops today. Valus Jones had a drop, and the and the DBs were chirping at Valus about it. it um, you know, the running backs had a few drops. Khalil Herbert had one right in his hands. Um, seven on sevens, one on ones. Doesn't matter what session it was. There, there was it seemed to be a drop every series, not helping your quarterback out. And then there was a couple times where I felt like the wide receivers weren't tracking the ball on a deep ball. You know, trying to get that connection and. Maybe I thought the placement was there and the wide receiver is not getting his head turned around to find where the ball is at. So while the quarterback certainly needs to, you know, keep improving and building chemistry with guys, the wide receiver's got to help him out too. So uh, that's my worst. My best is off the field. The best thing I have seen at training camp in a long time, maybe ever, was by Noah Sewell while he was signing autographs with fans. And it honestly puts chills on my back just thinking about it because this guy – took his time with a family that has, you know, needs sign language to communicate. And he took his time, five minutes with this family, to learn a sentence in sign language to communicate with these people. And to watch him do that, you know, we can talk about football all day. We're going to get to preseason games and the regular season games. To watch a, a young man in Noah Sewell do that, Honestly, I gained a lot of respect for me. He's got a fan for life in me. I don't care where he plays. Hopefully he stays here forever. But this dude, to to do that in that moment and take his time, showed a lot of maturity, and he's got the utmost respect for me. And I know every person that was standing around watching that, he gained a fan in every single person, including that family. So shout out to Noah Sewell.